we can probably go walk in that direction. He doesn't hear us because he's got uh, ear, ear things done. Nice to see the reflection on the water. Welcome everybody, Judy and Meg and Denise and Licia and Rosalia and Margaret and Millie. Cloud is still keeping the sun disk from our sight. Good morning, everybody. Got that blue hern there, or purple hern. I guess it's purple hern, is it not blue hern? They're probably blue herns as well. She realized we were watching her. It's really beautiful, isn't it? The movement of those wings. And then the effectiveness, just beating the wings, the air can hold them up. That's the longest I've gotten one of these on the camera on a constant flight. And there it wants to rest again. Oops, sorry about that. It's zoomed in so it swings a lot. It's funny, we're like quite a ways away from maybe 80 yards away. And she got so nervous there and took off because we were focused in her direction. Don't hear many planes, thanks be to God. It was the opposite of 9-11 when the skies were so quiet, living near White Plains Airport. All the planes were grounded. It was an eerie feeling. But here, we're so used to the calm, the quiet in the skies. There's no big city nearby. Oh, there comes the sun. There we got it. So today we have our good menu of readings, a beautiful psalm. thoughts you want to talk about Celine? Well I think that that um, beautiful psalm this morning gives us such um, peace because um, one of the things that's made clear in the readings today is that we shouldn't fear anybody or anything but then the one thing that remains is our own sinfulness that bothers us but the psalm reminds us that the Lord takes away our guilt 
there anyone who does that in the world, normally people point out our, our errors. They throw them at us. They use them to control us or to, to uh, label us. But the Lord does not do that. The Lord takes away our guilt. The Lord forgives us and restores us to full dignity. That's his delight. So what a beautiful uh, God-like way is when we can go around as well, looking at others, not to find a, a point of guilt, but to build up what's good in them and to help them to move forward like the Lord does for us. That's very nice. That kind of reminds me of a, a mom that has a little child and the child spills the dessert on their dress or something and and the mom hurries to fix up the child because they're going out to visit friends or something and she wants the child looking the best possible maybe that's a little reflection of god wanting to restore us that redemptive heart of god to bring us back and faith in that god who makes us well makes us well so profoundly that's a, a wonderful commentary on abraham 1700 years later made by paul in today's reading about abraham's faith it's interesting to see that isn't it in the the all those believers those pious Jewish people, how they treasured a history that went back so far before them so many generations, such a long history. And Abraham in a way is shrouded in, in many practical things and in that distant memory of the people and so many pencil strokes of his life. And yet that profound intuition, that profound uh, capturing of his person, of his, the gift that he is. And we call him our father in faith with good reason. It's also interesting that all of the monotheisms are rooted in his faith and that gives us a great brotherhood and we have our major differences and difficulties along the way but we need to capture that or be aware be nourished from the root of that tree of faith that deep root of the response that Abraham gave when God called him repeatedly and he had to wait so long and be so tried and tested and then so many others after Abraham in that record of a life of faith I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. Here there are lots of very sharp thorns. We're always looking at the nice flowers, but these thorns are very sharp, very hard. Sometimes working in the fields at home in the hedges, cutting hedges. And accidentally getting pricked by a thorn. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. 
and you fill me with the joy of salvation. What a beautiful inspiration for our prayer life, for our lives. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. That's a beautiful manifestation. You know, there are lots of things that we complain about in our world today that we see that are, are very weak and sometimes very misguided. And yet the whole world rallies in prayer. So many prayer vigils, so many prayer encounters ecumenical and interreligious also. This is uh, very, very, very interesting. You know, how could you convoke New York City to prayer? But after 9-11, there on Broadway on that Sunday, all the religious leaders of different faith communities came together and they implored help from on high I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. And to think that the Psalms go back centuries before Christ, some of them back to the time of David. To think about that tradition of prayer, that tradition in the sense of handing on from generation to generation and a living tradition of believers. Faith comes through the ear. And the little children at 9-11 who were there praying uh, the, the grandparents, all the calls that go out for prayer when somebody needs support in cancer, somebody prays for stem cell donors, somebody prays for a childbirth that's difficult, for resolution of moral problems and conflicts and now we see it these days here I turn to you Lord in time of trouble and you fill me with the joy of salvation I'd like to tell you a little story <laughs> that happened in Germany I was there in uh, the late 80s 90s and then obviously during the the Kuwait war the Hundred Day War, and I was guest of the abbot of the monastery of Tolai, and uh, that's on the the French Luxembourg border of Germany. And he, we actually drove together. He brought me from Essen uh, to his abbey because I had an appointment in that area the next day, and we had just been at the together at the funeral of Cardinal Hengsbach, and. He was telling me that once the it was a terrible sensation in Germany when planes left Germany engaged in that war. That was the military air base that the US was using was in Germany. And he said that the church was filled with people every day and especially every Sunday. But as soon as the war was over, It was back to business as usual. So it's an interesting feature about humanity that when we have times of trouble, we turn to the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. And then when we have the joy of salvation, we don't turn that much more to the Lord, who is the source of the joy of salvation and particularly eternal salvation, which is the message of the gospel today. Eternal life. And that's always so fragile given our, our weakness. And there are faith like the faith of Abraham, standing to us and standing, supporting us like stronger than the trunks of these trees as they might come down in some storm, but 
our faith, God will never let us down. I think we'll leave it like that for today and wish you many blessings. I don't know, Celine, you have any final word here? I was just thinking of that beautiful response to the psalm. I turn to you in times of trouble <clears throat> and you fill me with the joy of salvation. The contrast between immense suffering, immense brokenness, situations that are, seem totally dark and the Lord doesn't give us a small bit of help. He fills us with the joy of salvation. So I think this is something very beautiful for us to remember today, that God is splendid in his uh, gifts, in his mercy, and we can ask for this same mercy. Tap into it today for all the people who are suffering. God bless you people. God bless. See you later, alligators.